So one of the biggest talking points of the 2019 Barcelona pre-season test is of the new regulations and the new front wings that various teams are deploying. Now, I think there's three different distinct groups of front wings. Uh, one group here, second group and the third. And alongside me, I've got Gary Anderson to talk all about them. So, Gary, first of all, what do you make of the different front wing designs? Well, coming from last year, the, the front wing end plate was actually, if we use the Mercedes as an example, the front wing end plate was 100 millimetres further in. And basically everything was built to turn the airflow around the front tyre. All the turning vanes on top of the wing, everything was to do that. But now the wings got wider, so you don't have to put as much effort into turning that airflow around the tyre. It wants to do it naturally anyway. But uh, Mercedes have gone with more or less a concept from last year. It's got five elements. Last year they probably had seven. Um, and then all these bits and pieces have had to go. So they've still got what you might call a front wing. Very high throat on it here, so a lot of airflow can go underneath that wing. And again on the, uh, on the Red Bull, very similar sort of concept. So that's, that's one solution to the problem. But if we come sort of right over here, we've got Ferrari, the opposite example. They drop the flaps down right where they go onto the end plate. And basically, this area here, they're giving up the downforce that they could produce from there. But it's very difficult to produce downforce in that area because you've got the tyre right behind the wing. So they've decided to not bother doing that. And that means the tyre itself is in open airflow. So when you steer the car to go around the corner, it's not influencing the front wing downforce so much. So these, these front wing uh, regulations, I think by accident, actually makes the cars better cars because steering angle and front wing downforce is really critical to get the balance of the car mid-corner. I think Ferrari have done a good job on this. We'll see how Mercedes, which way they go, and, and Red Bull obviously. And we've also got this column down the middle. It's <coughs> almost a halfway house design, if you like. Um, there is a little bit of inward turning of the wing, but there's also hallmarks of this design here. So what do you think that these three teams here, Racing Point, McLaren and uh, Renault, are trying to do here? Well, there's always a happy medium. You know, you look at these two here and you say, oh, that's dramatically different. But they didn't, they didn't go that direction from not trying something. They didn't go that direction from not trying different solutions. So they've gone as far as they think fit. And if you take the, the, the one here on the uh, uh, racing, racing Point, They've got a very high leading edge on the wing here, so a huge gap underneath it. So they've got a very flat wing angle, but similar to Ferrari, but they don't have the, the height on the main plane on the Ferrari. So this is not so far away from this one, just a cheese a little bit different because they've lifted the, uh, the, the main plane of the front wing higher. So they're all heading the same direction. Uh, if you take that as you know, the, the initial step, they're all heading somewhere between there and there to a different degree. And it depends on the twist in the wing as well. So so much to do with basically making the airflow work around that front tyre as efficiently as possible without the front tyre affecting the wing when you're steering it. Now, at some point during the season, uh, we're going to see these wings in action. And at some point, one of them is going to prove to be what might be the best solution yep. for this current rule set. Do you see some degree of convergence going on or is it going to be uh, a little bit too much of a stretch for these teams to make these wings work on their own package? Well, I think the one team or the two teams that have most opportunity to see the difference is Toro Rosso and Red Bull. They're sister teams. They've got two different concepts. So whichever one of these two here appears as quickly as possible, copying the other one, that's the solution that's best for, for the overall wing downforce level. Um, difficult to change on a car because the flow around the tyre is quite important to what's happening further back down the car. So a lot of other things may have to change at the same time. It might not be the, the job of a, you know, a couple of weeks. It might take a little bit longer than that. So will we see it at Melbourne? There'll probably be somebody to try if there's a significant difference. But watching the cars out on track, I'm not sure I see the big difference. It's, you know, although it looks visually quite different, I think performance-wise it's not that far apart. And so, Gary, we also have the Alfa Romeo wing as well. Now, this one looks still a little bit different to the rest of them. It's maybe a little bit rooted in the Ferrari design, but it seems a much more extreme variation. What do you make of it? Yeah, it is. And, and they've separated the sort of wing so they can run the flaps on this section here a lot lower. Um, most of the end plates themselves just have a slight curve outwards, um, but they've separated it here. And interestingly, they've actually gone in this section here, they've gone to four flaps. Um, and, and on this section here, there's five. So this is the area where they've had problems with airflow separation. But here, they're able to use the bigger flap 
and that'll give them a bit more front down for us. But the one thing I'd say with these uh, front wings this year against last year's, which had maybe seven or eight elements, as I say, is the slot gaps are quite a lot bigger. Yeah. So they're letting a lot more airflow through those slot gaps as well. Trying to m get the consistency. The slot gaps are all about airflow separation and trying to make sure the, ki the wing keeps working. This is a bit complicated for me because when you do something like this with such a, uh, a steep transition, you can get a lot of transverse flow, whereas this here is very uniform. So the transverse flow will be blended out nicely. So you could get airflow separation in areas that you don't really know about at the moment. My, my solution is that one. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Gary. And for much, much more on Barcelona pre-season testing, join us at autosport.com and motorsport.com for all of the latest updates.